The public test realm for phase four of Season of Discovery is now out and we can hop on there and check out all the various different changes that Blizzard are planning when we finally get stuck into the end game of this seasonal server. Today's video will be focusing on the main feature changes of phase four. I will of course be talking about classes in way more detail but I want to dedicate a full video to that as there are a lot of class changes which are currently being tested in this phase. Also out of everything on PT PTR's classes tend to change the most, and as we'll hear about in a moment, this PTR is going to be going on for a bit, and I have to say I'm cautiously optimistic about Phase 4. In any event, we have a whole lot of things to cover today, so let's begin. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor, Factor 75. Balancing everything in a busy life can be difficult, but Factor 75 offer convenience to make it easy. Factor 75 are delicious dietitian approved meals which are delivered straight to your doorstep. These meals are calorie counted, and the weekly menu features over 30 restaurant quality meals, including keto, calorie smart, vegan, and many more different options. So no matter the dietary restrictions, there'll be something for everyone. But the biggest benefit about Factor 75 has to be the convenience, as you won't be spending ages in the kitchen anymore to make something nutritious, and each meal will be ready in about two minutes or so. It's microwave food, but just not in any way that you've seen it before. And if you did want to try them out to see if it's for you, you can use my link and get 50% off your first Factor box and 20% off your next month of orders. Many thanks to Factor 75 for the sponsor today, let's get back to WoW. So I mentioned this PTR is going to be going on for a little bit, and that is based off a tweet Tagren said, where when he was replying to a comment about there being no world buffs at the moment, he said it was a deliberate choice not to include world buffs in these first few weeks of the PTR. So if you are looking out for a release date for Phase 4, which we currently don't know, it's going to be well into July if this is anything to go by. That being said, we've already waited a bunch for Phase 4 now, even before the release of Cataclysm, it felt as though we were waiting, and at this point in time, I'd just rather see it release in the best state that it can be, even if that means waiting more and more. Season of Discovery is already at its low point, and what would be the benefit of trying to rush out the content when it could just lead to more disappointment, similar to what we had from Phase 3? Also, it's not like Phase 4 is the final phase either. We still have the rest of the typical classic timeline content, and anything else that Blizzard has been cooking. So let them cook and let's wait and hopefully it's worth the wait. We've also had a bunch of updates about raids in the next phase. In the development post, Blizzard mentioned that Molten Core will be getting a brand new variable difficulty mechanic called Heat, and they also gave a special mention to fire resistance gear. I would also expect the mats for greater fire protection potions to be spiking super hard after this announcement. I do hope that given that Blizzard want to add some kind of difficulty levels to Molten Core, they have thought about the fire resist buff from Upper Black Rock Spire, because if you don't know, you can go up there and mind control a Scar Shield Spellbender, and then put a 83 Fire Res buff on any target, which will last for one hour. And if the raiding content really demands it and you do need that much Fire Resist, I can see this becoming meta, and quite annoying to do at the same time. They also mentioned during the dev blog they have one more surprise for intrepid adventurers to discover. Imagine if Ragnaros sprouted legs like he does in Cataclysm, and got out out of his fiery pit and started bashing people with Sulfurus. But I've read quite a few different opinions on this heat mechanic, and I'm just gonna go with what Blizzard said in their blog, it's a new variable difficulty mechanic. So Molten Core is going to have different difficulties, and I think the closest comparison you can draw with this is what Blizzard did in AQ14 Season of Mastery. Not a lot of people may remember this because not many people did the content to be fair, but in AQ40, after you defeated the first boss, Prophet Scarab, you could interact with an object and then choose the difficulty level that the rest of the raid would have. It had four different levels and each one would add new mechanics to boss encounters. The first level would add small claw tentacles, the second one small claws and eye stalks, the third one small claws, eye stalks and big tentacles, and for the fourth level all of the above and Cthune would occasionally show up and do his iconic eye beam, which of course if that changed to other players will just one shot everyone. 
and this is what I expect heat to be based upon. I don't know what the rewards for these heat levels are going to be, we don't know that yet, but for example, maybe bosses can drop an item you can turn in at the Hydraxian Waterlords rep to unlock a new crafting recipe. Maybe it's just going to be more loot. In any event, I don't expect it to be better loot because that could get confusing with multiple difficulty levels. I think they'll keep things a bit simpler and the bonus rewards will be tied to crafting, reputations or just more loot in general. I have to say though I am a bit skeptical about difficult content in vanilla in a game where we have world buffs and consumable stacking. The really good guilds are going to make this content regardless of how difficult it is look like a joke by week two I am sure. People really go crazy with vanilla content. Whatever's lurking in this raid I'm sure it won't be that much of a problem but the more casual guilds will have well far more problems if they are taking on this content. For the simple reason reason that tryhard guilds by the second reset won't be wiping anymore and if you have world buffs and if you have consumables you can just overpower the content whereas if for example you narrowly miss out on a boss kill with your world buff and consumables for your next pull your whole raids going in being about 30 percent weaker you really don't have much of a chance anyways those are just some early thoughts on this heat level thing we'll see what they do what the rewards are and indeed if i'm right about the variable difficulty levels next up so if you've been playing Playing a warlock or a mage, something that does fire damage as a core part of their rotation. You've probably been a bit concerned about Molten Core because, well, it's full of fire elementals which are immune to fire. But it looks as though this may not be the case in Season of Discovery. When asked about this on Twitter, Agren said, I can't really see a world where we say you can't tank this raid at all, at least not right now in Season of Discovery. One tank may be better at certain things, but I suspect we'll tune most of the raid content at 60 to to allow for pretty much any combination of tanks, especially with the smaller raid sizes. So in likelihood, spell resistances may not feature as prominently as a barrier to certain specs being functional during Season of Discovery. Because if Searing Pain didn't work for Warlocks, it wouldn't just be about Molten Core, because you wouldn't be able to tank Anixia, and you wouldn't be able to tank most of Blackwing Lair either. It would kind of be a disaster. Also, the Datamind revamped Warlock Tier 1 set has bonuses which affect immolate as well as incinerate so for both of these spells to not work most of the time with the tier dropping from the raid that they're for that just wouldn't make a lot of sense also as a quick side note from this same tweet Agrind also said, I think in a potential future version of Classic that is a bit more grounded in fewer changes vanilla, we might explore that design again. Bit of a soft confirmation that there will be more variations of Classic after all is said and done with Season of Discovery, and maybe one with fewer changes. Moving on regarding raiding, both Kazakh and Azyogos will be moved into instances instead of roaming the open world. They will also be tuned for 20 players, but you can bring up to 40. I'm a bit mixed on this change to be honest. I'm kind of okay with some content being something that I will never do because I just don't want to put the effort in which is involved in doing it. It's the same idea as getting rank 14 for me. I know exactly what goes into it and because of that I'm never ever going to do it and I'm okay with that. For a counterpoint though the whole culture surrounding world bosses was extremely degenerate. People would wake up in the middle of the night, they would form coalitions to hold the bosses down, they would be camping them non-stop for the spawns and people would spend hours trying to reset the bosses if a guild they didn't like too much had started to pull one. Also this would have been content which 99% of the player base would never have seen. I don't even know how many hours I've got in this game and I've still not done a world boss and I'm kind of okay with that but in season of discovery for the first time ever everyone will get to kill these well they're not really world bosses anymore are they now they're just bosses. I'm expecting the four green dragons to get the same treatment when they release sometime after Blackwing Lair probably and I would get those summoning networks ready because this is going to be a lot of traveling. There's also been an update for the Hand of Ragnaros which has been data mined, giving it way better stats and most notably making it quite clearly priority for your feral druids. It's a bit funny that it's going to be best for feral druid when it's such an iconic weapon that stands out and when a druid equips it they turn into to bear or cat form and you never see it again. It would be cool if when you equipped Hand of Rag, 
your cat or bear form turned into some fiery version, kind of like the flame cat which existed in the Firelands. Maybe that model would stand out a bit, then again we do have the meta warlocks in Sod, so maybe we should be used to that by now. There could also be updates to other legendaries too, but we're just not aware of them, such as Thunder Fury or Ati Ash. Then again, maybe we see new legendaries brought into the game. What about Talisman of the Binding Shard? This mistakenly dropped back in original vanilla from Baron Geddon for one player before Blizzard Hot fixed it out of the game. Then again, perhaps we get to see Andonisius Reaper of Souls made into a real legendary. This was a temporary weapon used for the Atiesh quest chain, but it does have legendary status, and we all know melee classes are really short on orange weapons in vanilla, am I right? There was also a joke item dropping from the test boss on the PTR, hinting pretty heavily at the Ashbringer. They could be throwing an inside joke at us, and then they could end up releasing it for real. We just don't know, and that's quite exciting. Of course, if they did put Ashbringer in the game, it would have to be a Paladin exclusive legendary, right? I'm sure nobody would have a problem with a faction and class exclusive orange weapon. Speaking of classes, we're going to talk about them a little bit. I'm not going to go into great detail, but I just want to give you some ideas about what Blizzard are planning for Phase 4. Tier 1 as a whole has been completely revamped, with new stats and different set bonuses depending what your role is. I'm still expecting some kind of tier token system to be introduced to make buying these a little bit easier, as shamans for example have four different set bonuses they can choose from. These set bonuses are going to add something to your rotation, and just make your class a bit more interesting to play, which I'm looking forward to. I always thought these set bonuses from vanilla were very much hit or miss. There will of course be two new rune engraving slots added to the game. First up we have the new ring engravings. All of these are basically regarding hit chance for spells or bonus weapon skill for physical attacks. And the back runes will have a choice of three different new abilities that your class can take advantage of. We also appear in part to be getting account-wide attunements with a data mining for a new chipped Drakefire amulet being in the game's files. This is simply the Drakefire amulet which you always got from the Onyxia quest chain, but now one that you'll be able to send to Ols. I really hope that these are added to a vendor and there's something you can buy on each individual character, because if you're raiding Onyxia and you forgot to mail your amulet over to whichever character you're doing it on, there's still a one hour wait limit on mail in the game, and I could see that being particularly annoying here. There have also been so many baseline class changes. I just want to give you an idea of some of the things which will exist now. For Paladin, Seal of the Martyr, Exorcist, and Avenging Wrath will all be baseline abilities. Hunter will have Heart of the Lion as a baseline ability. Rogues are getting a bunch of different new poisons. Shamanistic Rage will be baseline. Recklessness has been moved down from a 100% crit chance on a 30 minute cooldown to a 50% crit chance on a 5 minute cooldown. I'm pretty sure this is a buff by the way, which may not have exactly been what was in intended, but when I get round to talking about warriors more, I'm sure I'll go into detail for that. Oh and warriors, by the way, in phase 4 you're getting death grip. Yeah, seriously. It's called Meat Hook, and it works exactly the same way death grip does, which is crazy to me. Finally, let's finish up on a few more miscellaneous changes that will be coming in the patch. The STV event will be making a return with a new currency and new items, so you're going to be going back into that jungle once again in Phase 4. PvP ranking will also go up to rank 10 and there'll be the new class sets. We haven't seen the class sets yet, but I'm expecting them to have updated itemization to kind of keep power with how things are going in Season of Discovery. We also possibly have a new PvE event, which was called Black Rock Eruption, and I'm saying possibly PvE event because we know next phase there'll be STV, there'll be Alteric Valley, so it kind of makes sense. We don't have any more details about what this could be at the moment, but the two zones in Searing Gorge and Burning Steps in the shadow of Black Rock Mountain have always been very iconic, so I'm looking forward to seeing what this is. Nightmare incursions will be made into daily questing hubs. So I ran over there on the PTR and checked, and there were three quests available, which just said go and get more of the gathered items, which typically you need a profession for. This will be unfinished, there has to be more to it than this, and there's no way you can get all the three profession quests in one day, because that just wouldn't be much fun if you don't have those professions. Then again, these areas could be capped at three quests maximum per day, because if they just are turned into daily questing hubs, you'd still be able to do 25 incursion quests a day, which is obviously going to be crazy experience and gold, and I hope we don't go down that route again. In any event, Warlocks are about to make 
bank next phase off summoning networks. We have all the different bosses you need to teleport to, and going between all the incursion locations too. The Discoverer's Delights experience bonus will continue on into phase 4 as well. Between 1 and 50 you'll be getting 150% bonus XP, and between 50 and 60, 50% bonus. And of course, there will be updated profession items and reputation rewards from endgame content such as Argent Dawn, Thorium Brotherhood, Hydraction Waterlords, and Timbermore Hold. If you really want to, you can start doing a bunch of these reps at the moment, by the way. We don't know what these rewards will be yet, but they're probably going to appear either on the PTR or via data mining before the patch releases. And that is it so far. I'll definitely make a start on the class-related changes soon. Again, there's a lot of them, and things are liable to change change so watch this space. Anyways thoughts on phase 4 at the moment, are you interested in the changes, is this going to be enough to bring you back or are you just going to give the content a go, not really expecting much but if it's good then fine, let me know below. And as always thank you all so much for watching and listening in and I'll see you on the next one very soon.